Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. Many of the examples I've seen for signal forms are great until your form isn't small anymore. When forms are composed of many different subforms, things can start to get a little messy. But today, I'm going to show you how I've been handling this so far. So here, we've got this form with an account information section, a shipping address section, then a preferences section, followed by a submit button at the bottom. From the user's perspective, this looks totally normal. But here's the thing, forms like this are rarely built as one unit. In a real application, account info might come from an account library, shipping might come from a checkout or fulfillment module, and preferences might live somewhere else entirely. With reactive forms, this kind of composition was fairly straightforward. With signal forms, it's a little different, and that's what this video is all about. So let's open up the code and talk about how this is structured before we wire everything together. First, let's take a look at the directory structure. We've got an account directory, a shipping directory, and a signup directory. In a real app, these might be Angular libraries, possibly even owned by different teams, but here they're just folders, so we can focus on the core idea. When we expand the account folder, we can see the account form component, which contains the first and last name inputs. We also have the preferences form component, which represents the preferences section at the bottom of the form. If we expand the shipping directory, we see the address form component. This is the address section in the middle of the form. And finally, inside the signup folder, we have the profile form component. This is the parent. It owns the form, wires everything together, and handles submission. So that's the current structure of the form and where things live. But it's not currently built using signal forms. So let's change that and do it in a way that scales and allows us to reuse these form sections anywhere they're needed. Let's start with the account form component. Inside each of these form sections, we already have a model TypeScript file, so let's open that. Right now, all that's in this file is an interface that describes what this form section should look like. If this were a simple, isolated form, I might just put all of the signal forms model and form setup directly inside the component. But the problem here is that this form section is going to be part of a larger form, so we need to handle it differently. The idea I'm going to show in this video makes it so we don't have to rebuild the model and validation every time we want to reuse this form section. Instead, we'll export the pieces we need and import them into our larger form composition. The first thing we need to do is export the shape of this form model. I'm going to add a function called createAccountModel. This function returns a signal using our account interface. Then I'll initialize first and last name to empty strings. These will be the initial values for the fields. This gives us something really important, a reusable composable model definition that we can use in multiple forms. Instead of copying fields around, we now have a single source of truth for what an account looks like. That's step one. Now let's switch over to the profile form component. Remember, this is the parent form component. The first thing we need to do here is define an interface for the overall form model. Let's call it profile. Inside it, we'll add an account section typed using our account interface from the account form model. Now that we have the interface, we can create the model signal for our signal form. We'll type this signal using the profile interface. Inside the model, we need an account, and we'll create that using the create account model function we just added. So now the first and last name fields are initialized as part of this larger form. This is subtle, but important. We're no longer defining the entire form inline. We're composing it from pieces. Now let's jump back to the account form model. 
Next, we need to add the schema pattern, including validation for this form section. I'm going to create a new function called build account section. This function takes a schema path tree for the account section. Within it, we can now add validation. I'll make both the first name and last name fields required using the required validator from the Signal Forms API. For each one, we'll access the field off the schema path tree and provide a message letting the user know the field is required. So everything related to the account section, fields and validation now lives right here. This is the key shift. Instead of one giant form definition, each section owns its own logic. The parent just composes them. Now let's go back to the profile form component and wire this up. First, we add our form using the form method from the Signal Forms API. We pass it the model signal, then provide a schema callback that gives us access to the field tree. Inside that callback, we call our new build account section function, passing it the account field tree. That represents just the account slice of the form. And that's it. No giant validator block, no massive schema definition. The parent component becomes an orchestrator, not a field and validation dumping ground. At this point, we have the form, but we still need a way to pass the field tree and state back into the account form component so it can bind fields and show validation in the UI. We'll do that using a simple input. Let's switch over to the account form component TypeScript. I'll add an input called form, typed as a field tree using the account interface. This tells Angular and anyone reading this code that this component only cares about the account slice. It doesn't know or care about the rest of the form. Now, to properly connect inputs in the template, we'll import the field directive. We'll also import our custom validation errors component. Now let's switch over to the HTML. First, I'll use the field directive to bind the first name input. Right below it, I'll add the validation errors component and pass it the field state for first name. Internally, this component watches the field's touched and invalid state and decides when to show errors. Then we'll do the same thing for last name. This component is now completely reusable, completely isolated, and totally unaware of the parent form. And that's exactly what we want. Now let's switch back to the profile form template. Here, we use the form input to pass the account section into the account form component. And just like that, the account section is wired up. While we're here, now that we have a form, let's also disable the submit button when the form is invalid. Now that you've seen how this works for the account form, I'll fast forward and apply the same pattern to the address form and preferences form so you don't have to watch me type all of this out again. If we open the address form model, we can see that we've added a create address model function and a build address section function. Then, if we switch over to the address form component, we've now added the same form input. And in the template, we're using the field directive to bind each field and showing validation errors for each one. The preferences form follows the same pattern, so we don't really need to look at that in detail. Now, let's switch back to the profile form component. Here, we can see the additional sections now in the profile interface. We can also see the additional sections in the model signal. And then we have the additional section builders in the form callback. So now we have a complete model that represents the shape of our entire form and a schema that's tied to it but there are still a couple more things we want to do. First, let's add a little more to our submission logic. We'll use the submit helper from the Signal Forms API. 
This keeps submission logic clean and ensures the form can only be submitted when it's valid. Inside the async callback, we'll log the form value, then return undefined. The submit function doesn't return data, it returns errors. So when there are none, we return undefined. Next, I want to add a debug panel component to help visualize how the form is working. I need to add it to the imports array. Then let's switch over to the template, add it to the view, and pass it the form. All right, let's save and see how this all works. Nice. The form looks pretty much the same, except the submit button is disabled. And now we also have the debug panel. Here we can see the shape of the form, the initial values, and that the form is currently invalid. Now I'll click into the first name field in Blur. And there's the validation error. This means that our composited form structure is working correctly. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'll add a valid first name and last name. If you're watching the debug panel, you can see it updating in real time. Now I'll fill in the address. Oops, looks like the zip code needs to be five digits. Let me fix that. Now let's open the console so that we can see our submit log. Okay, now let's submit the form. Nice. Now we can see that the form properly submitted with all of our actual form data. Pretty cool stuff. Here's the takeaway. Signal forms scale, but we need to structure them intentionally. The pattern we use today, model creators per domain, section builders for the fields and validation, the parent form as an orchestrator, and child components receiving slices, not the entire form. This avoids giant form definitions, tight coupling, and copy-paste reuse. And it maps cleanly to real Angular applications. Now there definitely could be better ways of handling this out there, so I'd love to see what you're doing if you're doing something different. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, if you want to represent Angular in the real world, check out the Shieldworks gear link below. It's built for developers who treat their work like a real craft. All right, that's all for today. See you in the next one.